What do you mean? You have six minutes. Not six minutes. What are you talking about? What's good, chat? How's it going? Tisk is I. Bungie. I am alive. I promise. Hello. Hi. 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 Oof. It has been a minute. <laughs> How have you guys been? How is everybody? Jeez, man, I'm tired. I, I'm not. Well, Good. it's a lie. <laughs> I'm not tired. Oh, I'm wait, actually very work. excited. I'm, I'm just. I'm also like, I don't even know how to explain it. I'm just, it's been a, it's been a while. I miss you guys. That's what I'll say. All right. Now that look, high school's out. Summer's here. Facialville is happening. Like, dude, everything is amazing right now. You know, like I said, summer's out. We're going to be pumping out streams weekly. Weekly when I'm not when I'm not busy weekly. All right. I'm impressed. Dre Aura would so want to see this. Don't know where he at right now. Too bad he's finna miss it. That's unfortunate. Anyway, we're doing a reaction stream, guys. I'm here with my boy, Virtual. Virtual, are you gonna watch through the stream, or are you gonna, or should I screen share to you? I mean, it's gonna be very, very off for me. So you want me to screen share to you? <laughs> yeah. All right, Virtual. Okay. I guess, or whatever. I guess I can do that. Well, we got we got so many videos queued up, thanks to sharpness. Like I had a lot of my own videos, but then we got sharpness in here, giving me a lot of videos. This stream would be so long. Like I'm telling you. Thank me later. <laughs> the stream would be so long. Let's see. Let's see. Ooh, man. Jesus. That lighting is bright as hell. You guys can't see what I'm seeing right now. That's a good thing, actually. I don't want you guys to see just yet. I want you guys to soak this all up because, you know, this sprite right here. It was everything, man. It got us through everything. It's the knight in shining armor. Everything we did, everything we will do. This was the start. Now we're here. Now we're here. This. Turn on the camera. You want to see my beautiful face? Yes, I just. I want to make sure. I want to make sure everybody. Everybody can get their last goodbyes to what might be the very last time I use the sprite. It, I'll probably bring it back. It might be in the background. I don't know, but the time has finally arrived. We are here. So without further ado, I will say goodbye to the Sprite and hello, the face cam.
What's good with you, chat? How have you been? It is me, Bungie. Here in the flesh, with my PC that's been doing everything, and my Gojo sticker that's always getting blocked, and the extremely bright light that I have to turn on or you won't see me clearly. It is I. We are here for another banger. Hello. <laughs> What's the mic called? This? Fifine mic? Like, my favorite mic in the world? That literally picks up on everything I do? Turn that down a bit. Anyway. We getting into it. Let's switch over. So we're about to watch this video. It's about to be a W. Um, anyway. Lock in, chat. Lock in. Had one of the most successful career George Not Founders had one of the most successful careers in the Minecraft community. With over 10 million subscribers, dozens of viral uploads, and connections with some of the most influential creators in that space. Dream! No way! Dream face reveal! However, in only a few weeks, George's once promising career has slipped through his fingers along with hundreds of thousands of subscribers. And all it took was one video anxiety. Anxiety. that toppled his empire. And all it took was one video and a horrible... Okay. Uh, I'd like to open oh, my mind. Wait, that's George. And all it took was one video and a horrible response. That does not look like George. The girl does look pretty. That does not look like George. <laughs> like what? Okay, chat, you guys are like kind of getting in the way at whatever I do. But like, we don't talk about it. Why does this doesn't look like George chat? I know you can see it. I know you can see what I'm talking about. Why does this look like that does not look like him. George changed so much over the time span. That toppled his empire. It pissed me off that they can hide behind their power while victims are left helpless no matter what scenario. Wait, what is this? Like, I don't even know what this is. Caddy bugs. How, wait, how did you spell it? Katie. With a, with a Georgie C. looks espresso, espresso. What? His response video. Uh, VOD, maybe? Yeah. Because, damn, 30 minutes? Wait, hold on. My story. Now, let's just get into it. Hold on. We're going to we're gonna react to this a little bit. She's so pretty. Like, actually. What did George do to her, bro? Hi. She looks like a child. It's like, hi mods. <laughs> she kind of looks like an anime character. She doesn't look real. Lying for views. All right, chat. Who are we going to side with right now? Are we going to side with Katie or are we going to side with George? I don't know. I had I need to see the videos first. Let me see what happens. Um Nah, the fact that she's already about to start crying, she hasn't even ta started talking yet. She's like 17. 
Really? I apologize. <laughs> it's the fact that she's already about to start crying. What do you mean underage? She's not underage. If shit happened between her and him when she was underage, then like, okay, yeah. She looks like a lying bitch that cries until the boys play Valorant with her. Damn. You guys have just gotten so aggressive to this girl. She hasn't even done anything yet. <laughs> her mascara is about to smear. Yeah. It'll probably be a bit hard. Look at her. She's about. She's already about to start crying. I haven't even gotten into what she wanted to talk about. Um, I won't have um the chat on the screen because I can't read it right now. I also turned off victim playing so so you guys so you guys are siding with george and i found yeah you guys are like literally siding with george and i found so i can talk i don't know i say chat we wait i didn't think i would cry um let's see funny enough i wrote i wrote it down because I didn't think, <laughs> I thought I wouldn't have anything to say. You know, I thought I'd freeze up when I went live, which I kind of have, but I didn't think I'd cry. Um, Tell your story, hold on. Now. Let's get through this. I want to start this by saying I wouldn't be here without Shelby. Shelby. I'm ready to disappear with Shelby? If y'all don't know the Dream SMP at all, Shelby, if if she's if she's about to say what I think she's about to say, and she's like about to be like, oh yeah, well if it wasn't for Shelby helping me, then bro, a movie trailer. I'm not accepting any links through chat. You can join my Discord exclamation mark uh Discord, and send it in suggestions. Uh, anyway. She's mentioning Shelby. Now nah, let's just get through it. I'm like, I'm gonna pause. Secret forever. I never knew Secret. readers were allowed to talk about these kinds of things, and I guess I'm still new to it all. I just didn't feel brave enough, and I still don't. But her strength made me feel like it may be okay. A little while ago, my story had only. Ah, I don't know how to spell her name. So here it is on my terms. Here is my story. Last year, at the beginning of summer, I was assaulted by a significantly older and popular content creator. I was freshly 18 and had just graduated high school a few weeks prior. I was drunk in a hotel room with other people around me when it happened. He was someone I had once watched and he was eight years older than me. This was deleted. Powerful. Mm. Oh, on Twitter? Is there nothing on... If there's stuff on Twitter, I can look on Twitter. The full story is quite short. It was at a convention in a hotel room. It was my first convention I was invited to, so I stepped by one of my best friends the entire time. I was nervous but excited about it all and felt really grown up. One night, we were at a house party when we decided to leave. It was me, my best friend, and her other friend. This other friend was romantically talking to a really big creator at the time. He was also the best friend of my soon-to-be assaulter. She wanted to go back to his hotel room, but didn't want to go alone, so we went with her. I didn't really mind, as I was up for anything. 
When we got to the hotel room, it was the creator, the girl was talking to, and his best friend. The two of them and the three of us. Not much happened that first night, just some drinking and talking at a table. The guy's friend had been passing flirts at me the entire night, but because he was the oldest in the room, we assumed he didn't know my age. Later that night, when I left, I received Instagram DMs from him, and in my Instagram bio, in bold, was my age, 18, confirming he knew how old I was. A few days passed when I found myself in the sim same situation. Us three were at a party when it got boring and whether the girl wanted to leave and go to his room or he asked us who I cannot remember. Once again, I was drunker than the night before and was willing to go anywhere. I was naive and so we went back. I remember a friend seeing me in the lobby <laughs> on the way. They were worried by the way I was acting and asked if I was okay. I was really drunk and it was an eerie feeling, like they could sense something was wrong and I wonder what would have happened if I had picked up on it and if I wasn't drunk and if I didn't wave it off. But I don't want to dwell on the what if. That night I went up to his room. Back at the hotel room again were the two friends and us three girls. At the time, at the time all of us girls were already really drunk from the party we were coming from, stumbling and everything. There was more alcohol in the room, and we were encouraged to drink some more as they offered the bottles to us. They said they would join us in drinking, and insisted on drinking games, and already- Why is she playing the victim? She was drunk, and she was kind of creepy as you was playing with you. Hmm. I will tell you that that isn't the way you should be going about this. When you're drunk, you're not- You are accountable for your actions. You're not account accountable for what happens to you. So, i.e., if she was drunk and put herself onto him and started everything, then she can't hold somebody else accountable. But if she was just drunk, sitting down in the lobby, and somebody came onto her, she is not reliable for that because she's too junk drunk and not coherent enough. When you get drunk, the cognitive part of your brain, the frontal lobe, doesn't act properly, so you can't think straight, literally. So she might not ha have even known what was going on and it was just happening to her. That is a case in which you can play a victim because you are drunk, you can't give consent, and you're just sitting there and it's happening to you. And you could probably try to fight it off if you're a little bit conscious but she said she was really drunk and she was sitting in the lobby so so far it seems like she's in the complete right no in some countries and states you can drink at the age of 18. bungee being a smarty i'm just i'm just telling y'all before y'all start trying to bash this woman down before y'all know the facts damn so far she hasn't done anything wrong yet like if she was here yeah. like say say she was in a state where like illinois where drinking underage is a problem okay drinking underage is a problem that's a different topic what we're talking about is the sexual assault I, I, uh, blah, 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 speak words allegation so Wait, that's what happened that's what it sounds like that's what it i don't know she hasn't even really gotten into it yet. She's building it up. I'm just addressing what chat is saying. So, yes. If she's in a state where drinking at the age of 18 is okay, that's fine. If she was chilling there, like I am right now, and she was drunk, chilling there, and somebody came up and sat beside her, started touching her, started kissing up on her, and she wasn't coherent or anything of that sort, even if she was playing along, along with it does not make it okay. I'm telling you, if you are drunk and somebody is kissing up on you, somebody is touching you, somebody is doing extra with you, even if you play along, doesn't mean that you might not, you might not even know what you're doing. So, right, like, build up for that money. I wouldn't say that. Like, say she got raped. Do you think it would be as easy as just like, yeah, guys, I got raped by a famous creator. Like, no. <laughs> just getting sexually assaulted anyway would be kind of hard. It's not a buildup for money. 
it's better to go over all the details than to not and then like leave details open to assumptions going through the whole thing how she remembers it is better for her because this is an allegation it's going to build a case i mean think about just saying yeah i got sexually assaulted by george and i found at a party and i was drunk then it, nobody would believe her and you guys already don't believe her and she hasn't even said it yet so like yeah come on chat you guys said you guys are being neutral. It doesn't sound that way. It sounds like you're trying to nitpick everything to go against her. Pretty drunk. Anyway, like it. I obviously completely complied. We sat on the couch and answered questions about each other, drinking a bunch, and the older guy sat right next to me while playing. So she sat down. Used... Recap. She got drunk at this party. She was already pretty drunk. She sat down on the couch with bro. Obviously, she complied because she was drunk, like I told you before. And now, talking too long, taking too long, yeah. Now, they are talking, drinking more, getting more drunk. Okay. My nerves for excitement, as I had never been around such a big creator before. That makes sense. I remember getting drunker and drunker and really tired around this time. It was about 3 a.m. Oof. Right before the incident, I had answered a question about my age. We were playing a drinking game and talking about sex. And I admitted to everyone in the room that I was 18 and that I was a virgin at the time. I remember back now to him answering questions during the game about back when he was 19 and when he was in college, noticing how my future was his past, and I wondered how he felt sitting so close to me. It was a little after that, when I resorted to playing games on my phone when it happened. Out of nowhere, I felt him slip his hand. See? That's what I'm talking about. So if she's telling the truth, if she can back up these claims, if she's sitting there minding her own business, playing on her phone like she just said, and out of nowhere, because... He could also not be cognitive, right? I'm not even going to say that George not found, this seems like this is who we're talking about, is understanding what's going on. Maybe he was also really drunk and thought she would like it. But if she was being for real and she's sitting there, you know, typing on or playing games on her phone and he just slips his hand on her thigh and then under her pants, like he just said, or like she just said, sexual assault she did not say it was okay she did not say that that was like that that she wanted that she didn't give okay, consent so she's way too drunk your anxiety live underscore youtube is going to get a timeout for a minute yes yeah, that's some hot sex i mean i, I think Ki kiyoshi should also because kiyoshi yeah. said hot too this is a sexual assault case Let's be fair. Come on, chat. That's kind of fucked up. Under my clothes, sitting next to me on the couch, in front of everyone. In front of everyone. I disguised it with a simple, are you ticklish? I coughed out a no, still staring at my phone. I was overly aware of the fact that we were in front of other people. The fact that everyone else was sitting around us, watching us, including my best friend. And that his hand was inching further to places I hadn't asked for it to be. He made a game out of my embarrassment where he would touch me in certain areas to make me lose the phone game I was playing. I was scared and I felt sick, either from the alcohol or from his touch. It didn't matter because my mind was a blur. She was drunk. I didn't speak or move. I remember being afraid to even breathe. I stayed there for a that while. That makes that makes sense. Oh, okay, chat. Let me let me cook real quick. Oh, hold on. Virtual. <laughs> you know what time it is? What? Uh, wait. What is it? What was the name of it? Something like that? No, wait. Nope. Investigations myth. All right, chat. Chat. 
Listen, chat. Right? Hold on. Kind of loud. All right, look. So, chat. We said earlier. <laughs> now I gotta get. I gotta. I gotta get the glasses. Chat. We said earlier that she like somebody in chat said that she's 18 drinking she's underage i was gonna defend her saying that in some places you can drink <laughs> under age you know like you can drink at 18 that's the age limit we just found out that she was at vidcon which is at anaham anaham their legal age of drinking is 21 years now i say chat that what the internet wait it's frozen what are you guys talking about it's not frozen okay 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 good anyway back to it so what what i'm saying is is that what the internet anarchist just told us is that this is linked to the time where dream gave alcohol to underaged kids you know i just have to do the lot i think chat you know what i'm saying come on chat we cooking anyway back to the video starting to link up guys it was a big content creator five when she made the joke about content creators being in minors DMs, she mentioned that half the people had the assaulter as their profile picture. The tweet went <laughs> on to narrow down the suspected creator even further, reading, her best friend was romantically talking to the content creator's best friend, and they went to a hotel together as a group. This would be referencing the party that had gotten Dream into some dirt about giving underaged people alcohol, and it didn't take long for them to narrow it down to Dream's friend group, and eventually, George not found. These revelations prompted a Response from George stating, I'll be doing it. I'm gonna just let you know, I'm gonna stop trying to cook. Let me stop trying to steal bro's whole flow, right? I'm gonna let him cook. A very serious stream later today. This post is just to make that clear. I am gathering <laughs> all the information and evidence to share. I have never and would never break someone's boundaries or assault anyone. However, simply confirming that he was involved in this situation wasn't. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Joe says, I am gathering all the information, quote, <laughs> equals for the AI generated PR response. <laughs> You were the exact reason she was scared to say anything. I stand with the, the victim. But nah, the fact that he confirmed that he was a part of it ends this man's whole statement. It ends his career before it even started. Enough for the legions of viewers on Twitter to which Oh screw you, there is nothing that can make it consensual. One, she never said yes, anyways. And two you got her drunk illegally. Might no wait. Hold on. <laughs> wait. Hold on. Virtual. And two. You got her drunk illegally. I might add. <laughs> that nerdy ass addition. <laughs> to a point well beyond her ability to consent because you in case wait. I read like read English is your first language. <laughs> Because in case you forgot, inco intoxicating people can't consent. Intoxicated people can't consent. I cannot speak words. So. And conclude that he was guilty. With replies reading, quote, I'm gathering all the information. Oh, okay, she's so going to read what I just said. <laughs> AI generated PR response. You are the exact reason she was scared to say anything. I stand with the victim. As well as, oh, screw you. There is nothing that can make it consensual. One, she never said yes anyways. And two, you got her drunk. Illegally, I might add. To a point well beyond her ability to consent. Because in case you forgot, intoxicated people can't consent. Some were even hoping that George would commit self-termination. Me when jo oh, oh. All right, that's a little far. Self-termination? Damn. 
Bro. Important to remember that Katie had only presented allegations in her stream. That is true. Almost no evidence to support her claims of assault. That is also and true. Like Keemstar picked up on this observation and reminded everyone about a tweet he made years ago on how quickly accusations spread in the mind. I said on YouTube, if we get accused of sex, he's <laughs> guilty or not. Still true, nine years later. Hey, I play Minecraft. If somebody tries to say some, oh yeah, I did some sexual crime, y'all know, I'm telling y'all now. I didn't, you know how I many lawyers <laughs> you, know, you know how many people will be backing you up? On oh God, that's what I'm saying. Everybody would be like, "What? That does not sound like Bungie." Chat, y'all gonna back me up, right? I play Minecraft. I'm not trying to be in this situation here. Craft community. George had one chance to redeem his name. Chat says nothing. <laughs> Chat says nothing. Bungie would never. Okay, Jade. You get a golden star. Sure, Bungie is crazy. He would never, you fools. That's a pin right there. He would never, you fools. All right, hold on. Lock in, Chat. His case, then the hate he'd already faced would only be the tip of the iceberg. Before George could release his side of the story, Katie would reply with a tweet meant to condemn him even further, reading, Pull whatever you can find. Oh. I also have screen recorded everything. I plan on using it to support my case if needed, but please share it on my behalf if you'd like. That's why I can sleep at night without scrambling for screenshots to try and twist. I've been waiting so long. Damn, she just dissed him hard as hell, says some, oh yeah, this is why I can still sleep at night, saying that he can't because now he has to swift through things to help defend his case, where she's already been building this case for a while. She already knows what the fuck she's gonna say to say this but you're a fucking coward at this point george had only expressed that he wanted to share his side of the story but katie and others seemingly didn't want to hear him out jumping to the conclusion that he was going to lie another point worth noting is the fact that katie stated she has evidence to support her claims but didn't bother sharing any of it with viewers when making her accusations. That is true. That there are details of the story that Katie kept hidden. Details that George was about to blow wide open. Recently, a streamer named Katie Bugs went live and told a story involving me about sexual assault. So in this stream, I'm going to be addressing it. George would go on to explain what happened during his two interactions with Katie and her friends, starting with their first meetup at Dream's Hotel. The first night that I actually met Katie, I was with Dream in his hotel room, and Dream was in a group chat with five other people. These five people included Katie Bugs, her best friend, and three other of her friends. Now, these five people, they were at an official VidCon after party and they wanted dream to go meet up with them and hang out with them according to george the two groups first night together was spent playing drinking games and conversing as usual he also made a note of katie's claims about flirting and that their age difference made her uncomfortable my perspective of things is that i am with people that are over the age of 21 in a scenario where we are doing things that people that are over the age of 21 are doing like drinking he even presented a photo that supposedly showed she had a 21 and over wristband on which further supported his point about assuming they were all drinking age moving on to their second gathering george revealed that there weren't just five people in the hotel that night but eight which contradicts katie's version of events oh. so this time their friends were actually all able to get in i don't know how they did it but katie her best friend and three other of her friends ended up coming to the room which had me dream and my online friend that i just met so eight people total in this room at this point along with this george provided screenshots showing that katie and her friends had expressed a desire to be there with texts reading cool sounds splendid to me good shit. okay my goat Another contradiction to Katie's allegations was George stating her and her group had already been drinking at another party before meeting up with George's group. Another thing that she talks about is how we insisted that she drinks more and that we insisted on playing drinking games when this isn't the case. Again, they had already been drinking at this party before they arrived to the hotel room and they had also been the ones that were asking to play the drinking games. Looking back at how Katie framed her story, it was as if Dream and George were the ones who initiated both the meetup and the alcohol consumption, when according to George, it was actually the other way around. However, these weren't the only discrepancies in their accounts of what happened, as George mentioned that she behaved positively throughout the night with no signs of discomfort. She also says looking back on the scenario that she confused her nerves for excitement when I sit next to her. But again, 
at this moment in time, everything was friendly. Nothing sexual had happened. She was lying about some of this. Next to her on the couch. As well as stating that the murder. Or he could be lying about. I was her say, he could be. He could be lying about her too. You know, there is one thing that I will say that I did with Bethmo, and I'm gonna do here. I haven't seen. It's just been. He said, she said. With both of them, mm -hmm. there is no hardcore evidence for either of them. And well, then George that, had evidence. that wristband bullshit is around to somebody's hand. It could be her. It could not be her. I'm going to be for real. I mean, and then say it was her. She, she, she snuck in. I mean, teenagers sneak into clubs all they want yes okay you could say i was under the assumption that she was 21 and older but you heard in her story too that she said in her instagram uh, bio she said she was 18 and she said she was 18 while she was there so it doesn't even matter for him bringing up the fact that she had a 20 year old wristband on she even it was like she was covering her ass saying openly that she knew that she had this wristband on so say she did she still openly said, or at least she said she did, that she was 18 at that party. Not, yeah, I agree with Jade. I assume she was so-and-so years old. And which is the case sometimes. Kids do be lying. People will lie about their age. It's, it's hard out here for some people. But like at the same time, when you don't lie about your age and you're trying to find things to back up your claims, it's difficult because it's like, okay, you got this wristband. But if more than one person could vow for her and say that she did say this out loud. But the worst part about this whole situation is that unless they can have hardcore proof, like screen recordings of text messages, the he said, she said could be debunked because it's like, okay, well, if her best friend agrees with her. And Dream, who's George's best friend, agrees with him. You see where the problem lies? It's like, Dream wouldn't go against George even if he was in the wrong. And her best friend shouldn't. I would say should, because somebody who's innocent shouldn't get hurt. But I'm sure she wouldn't go against her best friend in this case either. In case Katie was lying. Point of focus for everyone in the room. She's implying that she is using her phone to essentially escape. I'm breaking the things. Scenario that she's in. That's just not how it happened, and this is why she brought up the phone game as kind of a point. The the game was honestly the central point of the interaction at this part of the night. George continued by explaining what took place on the couch they were sitting on, and it wasn't anything close to Katie's representation. During this, me and Katie were at the far end of the couch, and we were cuddling together. We had been cuddling for, I'd say, around an hour at this point, playing the game, talking, and just having fun. And for clarity, I had my hand around her waist above her clothes. Regarding Katie's most critical accusation, George had this to say. As I mentioned before, we had previously been cuddling on this couch for around an hour, but I did place my hand on her waist under her shirt. The way it's phrased makes it sound like it just happened out of nowhere, when in reality we had been cuddling for over an hour at this point, and it was not out of nowhere. On the topic of consent, George remarked that he'd always been cautious about it, and that their interaction went no further than under the shirt touching. I've always been overly cautious with consent, and this is not just because I'm a creator. I've been like this since before I was a creator, and I think that's just the way I am, and just the way it should be. While no definite verbal consent was given, non-verbal consent was clearly at play, and according to criminal law, he was still covered by the mistake of fact as to consent, which states, a mistake of fact defense is available in cases where the defendant honestly believed that he or she had consent to engage in sexual conduct. The lack of resistance can lead to a reasonable belief that the alleged victim consented in this crime. This is something that I am actually happy is in the law. Because this is something that can happen sometimes. I'll use myself for, as an example because it's easier that way. Say I am chilling at a party with a girl. And she's sitting right here. All of a sudden she gets all up on me, right? She's cuddling with me. She got her arms wrapped around me. Okay. I go in for a kiss. She kisses me. We kiss in for, say, like a good while. And then she starts touching me all over the place. But if I start touching her, she gets upset and then she storms off. And then it becomes a sexual assault case. 
who was in the wrong. She was really pushing up on me. She was all up on me. We were kissing. It seemed fine. When she started touching all up on me first, it seems fine. But if I start touching up on her and she gets, a, a, like, you know, uncomfortable and she walks away, if this wasn't in this law, then it would be like, oh, yeah, I'm a I'm a bad guy. I, I sexually assaulted her. That isn't the case in this point. It was a mistake. Even if it's a bit unfair, that would be a mistake, as I wouldn't have known that she wasn't okay with it due to her making it seem like she was. So I would say that's that's where I could understand his case if it was like how he says, right? Y'all have been coloring for an hour. You have your your hand at her waist. She doesn't seem to be opposing it, maybe even inviting it if she changes positions to allow you to more comfortably wrap your hand around her waist. I can understand. Now, I know some girls like dudes to make the first move. So if this was the case and it really did seem like that, yeah, I would say he's covered under this. And then George not found is really not the at fault here. But who knows? Case. However, the mistake as to a lack of a consent in it case must be honest and objectively reasonable unquote if what george is saying is true then it would have been reasonable to assume non-verbal consent yes that's how quote i didn't speak or move i remember being afraid to even breathe i stayed there for a while hoping my stillness could make me disappear now to reiterate any time that i did this it was met with her either smiling laughing play fighting with me and there was no reason for me to believe that she was uncomfortable with it. Finally, George would recount the closing events of the night. What actually happened is Dream had decided he was too tired and was going to bed. So the night was over and we all left. She then goes on to tell a story about the elevator and how I joked about it being broken to try to get her to go in with me. So Katie actually had her own hotel room on the same floor as Dream. So she actually didn't have to take the elevator. Although the pair would continue to message each other afterwards, communications would stop after a few weeks. To close out this dream, George would speculate as to why Katie had accused him of assault. I don't think she's purposefully being malicious or trying to hurt me or ruin my career or anything like that. But what I do think is that she is surrounded by a friend group that completely despises me and my friend group. When comparing Katie and George's accounts of what happened that night in Dream's hotel room, you'll notice seven key differences. One, the reason Katie and her friends went to Dream's room in the first place. Two, who initiated the drinking upon arriving at the hotel. Three, the number of people that were present at the time. Four, whether or not George knew her age prior to cuddling with her. Five, whether Katie's outward responses to George's advances were negative or positive. Six, the claims of Katie returning to him on the couch multiple times. And seven, whether the claims of the mobile game they were playing was an escape for Katie or a general source for entertainment for everyone present. Depending on how these details were framed, you'd either see what happened that night as a predatory incident or a bunch of creators having fun after a stressful convention. Speaking of predatory, Katie stated that she was freshly 18 multiple times. I don't think chat's even paying attention. attention. They're trying to find out who's prettier or not. Have you seen yourself? Chat. Lock in. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> I'm actually intrigued in this. I might not watch the whole thing. I'm just. A, I'm actually intrigued in this though. I want to. I want to know what's happening. I was freshly 18 and had just graduated high school a few weeks prior. However, Katie's 18th birthday was on the 2nd of January 2023, while the VidCon Anaheim convention took place on the 21st of June 2023, which puts her over five months into being a legal adult. Katie's wording about being freshly 18 must have been deliberately chosen since she had written her statement beforehand. Yeah, In addition, true. if Georgia's statements were true, then that would mean Katie intentionally left out important details. This would end up being the case when Dream released his response to the controversy on Reddit a few hours after george's stream why does dream always go to reddit don't have a problem with it just like why are you going to reddit man 
hearing both recounts of stories, being there myself, and talking to everyone that was there afterwards, George's recounting of events is much closer to what actually took place. Although, I did not know that any sexual touching had taken place. I can say for a matter of fact that their interactions were extremely positive throughout the night, and she had many opportunities of separation. While Dream would later take down this post, he would confirm George. He's a Reddit mod. <laughs> I don't think it's because he's old. If that was the case, then he'd be using like Facebook or something. This claims that Katie was part of a friend group that held deep grudges against them. Reading, I will agree with George in saying that there is a group of content creators that have a very large hatred for me and the Dream Team. Multiple of these content creators have spread lies about me and take any opportunity they can to spread negative rumors. Katie is not one of them to be clear, but she is friends with many of them, unquote. Immediately after Dream and George released their statements on what they believe truly happened, Katie would take to Twitter to drop a 10-page document to counter their claims. However, 10 page. Uh, it only brought more she questions than answers. She ain't typed on a 10 page document. George's point about consent being non verbal. Specifically, she made a point about the lack of verbal consent equaling no consent. Reading, he admitted to touching me, that I was drunk, that I verbally didn't consent. In my mind, the conversation is over, unquote. Right off the bat, Katie was trying to invalidate George's account by limiting the discussion to solely verbal consent and ignoring the several other signs that she supposedly gave at the time. I'm sure looking back, George wishes he could have quit from the situation. However, that's not the only thing our generation Real. must be quitting. Real, Say goodbye bro. to your bad habits are Delightful. No, I don't mean to banter your ad. I know, get that paper, but like, we got stuff to get to. Using it if he didn't hold information. Hey, with that being said, let's get back into the video. Katie then goes on to admit that she withheld information when she initially presented her allegation, and only planned on using it if he didn't admit to touching her. This means that Katie knew people on the internet would figure out that she was talking about George, and she wanted him to face the consequences of people who heard her story. In her address to George's stream, Katie attempted to discredit the evidence he presented by stating it was from a group chat he wasn't involved in, and by remarking that the game wasn't relevant, despite the fact she claimed to use it as an escape in her allegation. Katie continues by explaining why she returned to the hotel the second time, stating, I heard of a different creator who was in the room I wanted to meet, a detail she claims to have forgotten while presenting the serious accusations. After relaying some of the messages between them, Katie would then admit to leaving out key information in the form of not mentioning George's other friend who was present, but she justified it by saying, quote, he left early, which is why I didn't mention him. He left before anything really happened. However, Katie claims that he sent a message to someone who was also present, which read, quote, I'm currently watching George 26 cuddle with Katie 18, unquote. Another admission from Katie that she indeed cuddled George, and while he initiated most of it, she would be the one to start a few herself. Reading, a lot of the cuddling he may have felt was personal, but was just me being drunk. The next point was why Katie didn't move if she felt mm. uncomfortable. According to Katie, she returned to the sofa because, quote, even if I were to move, that would be an obvious hit to his ego, to him, and everyone in the room. A bold move I didn't need to make, unquote. For the rest of the document, Katie continued to... I think to you should it. have. If you wanted a... to protect his ego? I was going to say, yeah. Like, I would say that no, if you no. feel sexually <laughs> assaulted... You shouldn't sit there because you're afraid of hurting his ego. Now, we'll also say that they're at VidCon. So there are huge creators and then there are small creators. And if George's ego got hurt, ah. he could damage her career if he was that petty. But George is not that petty. So, like, I don't see the need to protect if his ego. If he was uncomfortable, whether you're drunk or not, leave. You could have left and avoided sexual assault. I would also just say that you didn't have to sit there. If it was a problem and you didn't like it, you can even make up an excuse like, yeah, I got to go to the bathroom. And instead of returning back to the sofa, like sit on the floor or something. Did because, you ask him to stop? Like, Well, when you're drunk, uh, I'm. we are saying this, right, as if she was coherent. She did openly admit, and everybody admitted, that she was drunk and she was drinking a lot. Yeah, but, but so she did admit time, that she, she knew that she didn't want to make a bold thing. Yeah. 
which I would also say that you might not even so... want to stop, right? Like I said before, with my example of kissing somebody, there is a point where it goes too far, right? Just because I'm kissing does not mean I want to have sex. You see what I'm saying? Like, just because I'm cuddling with you does not mean I want to be touched underneath my clothing. You see what I'm saying? So if that it happened, happened wait. that's what that's what he said he did. Remember that he was holding her waist and then he moved his hand underneath her shirt. Now, if that happened, right? Okay, I'm cool with cuddling, but I don't want to push it that far. Okay, the cuddling is cool. She's cool with that. But if she wasn't cool with him touching her afterwards, like moving his hand up her shirt, and it only happened once, then that didn't mean she was going back to it. If she didn't get up immediately, I could also kind of understand because it's like, oh my god, he's touching me right here. She's drunk. She's not really able to think. You would probably freeze. Some might. Some wouldn't. You know, this is like, it's now this is Your where it becomes. Reset. My stream reset. Yeah, uh, half an hour ago. Yeah. Says we've only been streaming for half for twenty eight minutes. Oh my god, I hate when that happens. I don't know why that happens. The glitches. Glitches. Whatever causes the glitches causes the reset. Really? Let me see. Yeah. Why did it cut it in half? Whatever. We just have multiple clips now. That's stupid. Made a techno bleed sound. <laughs> Yeah. Hey. 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 Anyway, to sum up what I was just saying, I still feel like in this case, she's got to figure out what she's arguing. Some of the things she said before has either been counteracted or debunked, or she hasn't given a clear answer for. But it's the same thing with George. He's defending something. But if she can provide clear evidence that it was something that made her uncomfortable and she tried to get away or that she that she can clearly remember feeling discomfort and just kind of playing in the moment because you don't know what might happen. That's most definitely something I could understand. I don't I couldn't say I could defend it and I really couldn't say that the the court will defend it too, like the government, but like. In this situation, to be morally right, you would have to be able to prove that when he did it that one time, say y'all been cuddling, when he did it that one time, you tried to get away. And if you weren't coherent enough to want to do that, you didn't feed into letting him continue. She's just got to figure out what she's arguing because she brought up a lot of claims and they're kind of getting debunked. But she really wants to stay on this streamline of being sexually assaulted. Well, if that's the case, you got to figure out what you're doing. Like, what are you actually arguing here, man? But wait. What? Were they in like a private hotel room or were there other yeah, people was there? Private. Well, like it wasn't completely sanctioned off. There were other people in the hotel room. But like when it happened. Apparently. Yeah, can we have their sides of the story? Because that could actually help a lot. Uh, well, yeah, that would help both of their cases. But there's there's a subtle thing, right? If he slipped her hand underneath her shirt, right, and they were cuddling, this could fall under the, oh, I thought it was okay. If he did it more than once, then it's like, all right, we need to stop this. Uh... Right? If it's a one-time mistake, then it's a mistake. If she told him to stop, so and then he did it again. YouTube, man. Yeah, no. That's a no-no. We don't promote YouTube right here. Ben. I'm not even reading chat. That's why I read it for you when it's important. Yep. Anyway, I want to get. I want to finish this video. And get through it as much as possible. Cues that George noticed by either stating that it was due to nerves, being drunk, or that she intentionally used them to hide a supposed discomfort. Reading, I was chilling in the moment because I was drunk. I don't know. I know I have to ponder on it. Finally, Katie would acknowledge that her friend group had already hated Dream and George by stating, Her friends influenced her because they hate us. I wonder why. The hatred grew because of what happened to me. Unquote. The story presented in her latest response drastically differs from.
No, you cannot. She presented in her initial allegations. At first, she made it seem like she'd been oh, clear signs of discomfort, oh, but was framing her story to include her hiding her discomfort. This is a massive departure from what she initially brought forward, and there are the sound is low. Because you're not a mod. And you don't need to be. A lot of unanswered questions that came with it. Why does she frame the situation? Is that better? The, well, hold on. I mean, I can turn this up a bit. I don't want it to get too loud because sometimes it'll get loud and sometimes it'll be low, like different videos. I didn't say you did. You don't need to be a mod. ...is more predatory than it actually was. How does she overlook so many crucial details in her allegations? And why would she switch from saying that she was visibly uncomfortable to claiming she was intentionally keeping it hidden but expected George to pick up on it? Factual. However, these questions would go this on is, This is why, see, and this is why I like what I did instead of watching this video only. Watching her, I do remember her saying that this happened intentionally and that she was uncomfortable and now it's like oh yeah well i wasn't per se uncomfortable but more trying to just hide it while i'm being uncomfortable you see what i'm saying like the fact that we watched her response first because i knew he wasn't going to play her full response he's going to sum up what happened keeping it hidden but expected george to pick up on it However, these questions would go unanswered as So are you stupid or are you stupid? Are you stupid or are you stupid? Are you Lack stupid? of verbal consent and proceed to pass judgment on George, I was hiding it so I thought he would pick I... up on it. Missing something, if George himself confirmed he inappropriately touched her, what's left to discuss? If he confirmed that he inappropriately discussed... That's up for debate because yeah, okay, he inappropriately touched her. Oh my god, Rudy! <laughs> the nonchalant dreadhead. All right, you know what? You know what? You know. What, what can I say, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know. I mean, like. I guess I'm just nonchalant like that for real, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's uh, get back to the video. As well as this. He was irresponsible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Not that nonchalant, come on. ...with a huge platform and an adult in general. She was a visibly young, drunk teenager who he didn't know that never clearly consented to anything. Okay, and this is why I don't like the internet. To defend George, under the law, in court with a good mm -hmm. lawyer, you can argue that he's fine. It wouldn't be a sexual assault case. Even though he admitted to touching her inappropriately, if it only happened once, then even I would have to say it was a mistake. If they were really cuddling, which she, mind you, did not admit. She did not say that they were cuddling. She said that they were sitting next to each other and he just slipped his hand under her shirt maybe lied or just kind of twisted what happened or didn't clarify that they were on like cuddling and then i guess we should also kind of clarify really what cuddling looks like because then there there could be like intense cuddling and then just like i'm sitting down you got your arm over me like this and we're just sitting on the couch you know that. what i'm saying oh, okay so i don't know but like in George's defense, in the state of law, he's fine because it was a mistake. I can't defend her right now because it's like... You would have to really bring up some hard-boiled proof that he knew you were 18 and he knew that you were visibly uncomfortable and still did it. Or if he did it once and you told him no and he did it again, then you can win that case. Other than that... No, bro. Exactly. I agree with Jade. If it was something like that, then yeah, you can say, okay, we were sitting on the couch with each other and kind of get away with it because yeah, you guys are both sitting on the couch right next to each other. And then you pull out your phone and start playing. You're kind of skimming over the fact that you might have been like, 
you know, he might have had his arm around you. Him saying that you're cuddling could be kind of twisting it to seem like you guys were really up close and personal because any of his fans will think that that was how it was to instate that y'all were, uh, not to instate, but to secure his spot in the, oh, it makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Anywho, back with the video. That's confirmed information, and now he is here trying to question if clear consent is necessary, as well as the new discussion is whether or not a drunk 18 year old can consent without explicitly saying so, to which the answer is obviously no, they cannot, say so. and touching them in a sexual manner without said consent is Assault. I People would are more also likely agree. To believe Katie's story and not question it as much as they did with George's side. Because of this, George felt pressured to make a tweet that ended up making things even worse. Oh no, George. On the 12th of March 2024, George released a Twitter post that would prove to be his biggest mistake an apology to appeal to all the negativity that he was receiving. You Quote, know, apologize. I understand it, but apologizing makes you look. It makes it look like everything she said was right. Even without proof. Makes you look guilty. It makes you look guilty. It makes you look guilty. That's like if I rob a... Like, not I rob a bank. Say I know who robbed a bank. Um, and me and another person get pulled in. And I just say, oh, I, I'm sorry to all the people that might have gotten injured in the bank robbery. It makes me look guilty. Apologizing in this sense, I know you're trying to be the bigger man and just be like, I'm sorry if I hurt anyone, I'm sorry if any of this happened, but it makes you look guilty. No, no he I wouldn't, wouldn't rob I a would bank. not <laughs> rob a bank. I wouldn't even need to. Jesus. Since reading yeah, he has me. Post, my perspective on that <laughs> virtual and my conclusion has massively Don't changed. You stop spending as money. She introduced new information that I was not aware of at all before. I have much more I will say, but for now, Katie, I am sorry. I am so sorry. See, that makes you look so damn guilty. Like, bro. Unquote. Whether George realized. I really hope you can hear my words and try to understand that I did not have any bad intentions. That does not change the fact that you were hurt. I will be saying more soon. Like, I get it. He's probably just trying to be a good guy. He is, like, from what I remember of George, I don't really watch the, uh, that group of people anymore. But, like, from what he's I remember of George, he's a good guy. He's At a kind, he he's a sweethearted guy. So, in this case, it makes him look bad. Because even if he's trying to apologize in a good guy standpoint, it makes him look like he's not innocent and that he's accepting that he did something wrong. And then on top of that, she's accusing him of all of these things. It makes it look even worse for him. Is it or not, simply admitting to any form of wrongdoing was enough for everyone who thought that he was guilty of the assault to justify their conclusions. This was only made worse by the statements of his two closest friends, Sapna what? and Dream, both Don't. opting to side with Katie. In oh. his Twitter post, His two closest friends sided with Katie? Oh no. Fake friends. <laughs> no, wait. No, no, no. We gotta go back. We gotta go back. We gotta go back. We gotta go back. Simply admitting to any form of wrongdoing was enough for everyone who thought that he was guilty of the assault to justify their conclusions. This was only made worse by the statements of his two closest friends, Sapnap and Dream, both opting to side with Katie. In his Twitter post, no, Sapnap writes, George! <laughs> well, George! When your two friends, Dream especially, who was there? Dream was there. He was there, chat. He was in the room with them. Siding with Katie is so bad. Oh, wow. Uh... Don't I think, that think George we got, is a bad uh, person. Wait, I think we got all we needed. I'm honestly really upset as I love George. He's my best friend, but there's no way around the fact that he fucked up. It needs to take accountability for what happened. I don't think that he had evil <laughs> intentions, but it doesn't matter if your actions caused pain. Please give all your love and support to Katie That's as she so deserves it. Unquote. No way. Or Dream would create a Twitter space in which he further disavowed his friend. We have other people who Disavowed? <laughs> That essentially means completely disagrees with what he said and yeah. I do not think that George is a bad person. I do not think that George was sitting there thinking, oh, you know, let me 
oh, I, she's not going to like this or, oh, you know, anything. I think that uh, he did something fucked up. I think that what happened was fucked up. I think that it was terrible. And I think that I feel terrible for any involvement that I had. And I feel terrible for Katie. It is a terrible situation. It is a terrible thing. The pain He's cooked. that she feels. And there's nothing that I can do to change that. There's nothing that George can do to change that. Chat, he's cooked. What more is there? Why is there so much time left? No, we got to finish this video. And that's fucked up. That is incredible. Like this right here, you can end the video right here. That's everything we need to hear. How is there more? By the 16th of March 2024, George would upload a second response to the allegations. And while he made some critical clarifications in the video, he also made some avoidable mistakes. For those of you who don't know, Katie Boggs recently did a stream and accused me of something very serious. I made a response and then she made a follow-up response. This is my response to her follow-up. Throughout this video, I'm going to be showing clips from some other people just for context. And just to make it clear, I don't want any hate to be sent to anyone, including these Following this, George would comment on various aspects of Katie's post, like the drinking game, the reason she wanted to come to the hotel, and their messages afterwards. Next, she shows our Instagram DMs, and she said that a reason she kept messaging me in a friendly way for a while after this whole thing happened was because, and this is a quote, she felt lucky to be talking to a verified account, someone famous, someone I had followed and watched for a while. Now, this is not something that I was thinking about at all. I wasn't that makes aware sense she though. Ever watched my content in the past. That was never brought up. This actually makes me feel pretty bad. The only reason she was messaging. What did we just talk about, George? Makes me feel bad. Now you're really making it seem like you did something she bad, bro. Because I have subscribers or something. I would never want that. Again, the only reason I actually brought up us messaging after the fact was to show that we were still friendly afterwards and that I didn't know that she was uncomfortable at the time. She also confirms that we did talk on Snapchat, like I said, but also that nothing really happened there either. However, George would point out another striking mistake in Katie's post. So next she agrees with me that she didn't mention my online friend that I just met that day. She said she didn't mention him though because he left early and she didn't even know his name. And she shows a text message that she says is from him from the night where this happened, where he says this. Obviously, this is implying that he was kind of uncomfortable with what was happening, and also that he knew her age, despite just meeting her. And when I first saw this, this actually majorly changed my perspective on- That is true. I didn't even think about that. That not only proves that he left because, damn, that makes him look very bad now. George's friend that he just met there, left from what i just heard left because he felt uncomfortable that george was cuddling up with an 18 year old while george is 26 that not only shows that he knew that his friend knew that oh excuse me katie was 18 at the time but it also shows that it was uncomfortable for him who was there in the room I do think that that's enough allegations to, to promote jail time. I ain't gonna lie. On the night, because that would mean that my friend was also uncomfortable and somehow knew her age when I didn't. And even though she said that he left early, my memory of it was actually that he was the last to leave just before me and Katie left. Dream also came to me and mentioned that this changed his perspective of the night as well, because that would mean that he was essentially the only person that wasn't uncomfortable. This prompted George to call. Damn, that, that means that too. Damn. That means that George. Then again, to defend his case, George didn't know her age, nor did Dream. Apparently, if that's the thing that we're going. Apparently, if that's what we're going to go with. So then that would mean that they did not know and that there was nothing they could have done about it. So say he thought she was 22, right? Okay, 22, 26, you know, you're barely a junior in college, maybe even a senior, if we want to say that in college, George is uh, uh, 26, you're 22, like, you know, but 18 is insane work. 
This guy. Can you not? Him. Like, actually, I don't mean to be rude. I understand that you sent your thing, but I'm doing a different reaction right now. Right? I'll get to your stuff today, maybe. If not, it'll probably be in the next reaction. But if you keep asking me, then I'm not. He didn't going even send no. it. He he just wants to promote the movie trailer. You didn't even send it in the Discord. Did you even join the Discord and send it in suggestions? I can't watch it that way. Anyway. There you go. He just saw no, no, he did, and what um, he said um, would only poke more holes in Katie's post. There is a text that is claimed to be. Yeah, he said that. We're good. Okay. Yeah, I didn't send that text. Oh. That is claimed to be from you. Yeah, I didn't send that text. Um, I found out about it when you sent it to me. Um, but yeah, I know that that wasn't me. I don't know where they got that from. I didn't ask them for any of their phone numbers or anything like that. He continued by giving his observation of what happened that night. I didn't really notice anything out of the ordinary. I didn't really notice any any like bad vibes or anything like that. It was a little playful. Maybe a little flirty. Um, I noticed they guys were just kind of like playing with each other and just like kind of cuddled up a little bit on the couch. So I was just, it definitely didn't seem like she was like uncomfortable, you know? I don't know. It seemed like everybody that was there was having a, having a good time. Cause I mean, we were there pretty late. So I, I don't really follow like this internet stuff like that. So I'm not up to date with what's going on online. The way she was explaining everything uh i mean at least to me like it didn't it was not like that at all to me it kind of seems like a misunderstanding there wasn't really a thought in my mind that like oh this this girl like could be in some sort of danger or she's being like preyed on or anything like that because yeah even even though george it's, is my friend it's just like donald trump is crazy doing anything that i wouldn't want someone i'm friends with to do then i would you know, I either would say something about it or not be a part of that situation. When Dream questioned her about the screenshotted message, she claimed it was an error and that the message was from another girl that was at the hotel with what we... Man. Chat. If she can't prove this message is real. Need I say less? We know now that seems highly unlikely. After that, he remarked on when he left the hotel and it was far from early. She says that you left early on in the night. Could you talk about that? I think around like 3 or 3.30, I went to go get tacos. I think I got the party pack or something. For some reason, I couldn't believe I actually went and got tacos. <laughs> I know for a fact that I got the tacos uh, like extremely late. Like, I had to go in their drive-thru even when I was in a car. Like, I had to walk through their drive-thru and, like, order through their speaker. That was yeah. fun. I know I left <laughs> at 5 or very close to that time because right after 5, I, I texted Dream that I left open the deadbolt on his door. Right after I left, oh. I texted him that. Timestamp? Date? Like, we could say it's photoshopped. But, like, I don't know. Mm, that's, that doesn't look photoshopped. It doesn't look photoshopped. To me. This is a fair alibi. Mm -hmm. I think that was like five. Yeah. Another I think that was... Nah, hold on. Nah, hold on. He said, I think that was like at 510. Unless they had this conversation like two or three days after, you're telling me you remember the exact time you sent that message while being drunk. Did and he ever say happened. he was drunk? They were all drinking. They all said that. They, they were all drinking at that. They were playing oh, drinking. Okay. They were playing drinking games. So you're telling me you remember the time. 
at like 510 and if i'm not mistaken all of this happened two weeks ago or within the time frame so it shouldn't this was in june i'm assuming of last year obviously you remember the exact time? Uh, I, 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 I don't know, man. Another unmistakable hole in Katie's but okay. post was that her friends had shown apprehension towards her and George's interactions. But when Dream had questioned about it months prior, they said everything was fine. I actually had no idea as well that anyone was uncomfortable and assumed that this tweet... I don't trust anyone anymore, for real. He reached out to Ghosty about it, asking what this was even about, and did the same to others, including Katie. Now, I'm not going to be showing Katie's text with Dream, because at the time, Dream had told her that her messages and conversation would not leave their texts. However, here is Dream and Ghosty's conversation about it. I was never brought up or mentioned at all. And also, when Dream makes fun of Harry for being ridiculous and making stuff up because nothing happened and we were all still friends. George then included a clip of Katie's friend Ghosty addressing what she said in Dream's DMs. The only time that we had a conversation about anything that had to do with that night was obviously when the stuff with Harry happened. Um, and he uh texted me asking if it seemed like anything had happened and i at the time said no because the conversation was not about george the conversation was about him and it was about the underage drinking and it wasn't ever about whether or not katie you know it was it was always just about him and not george which is why i said dude no nothing seemed wrong because he wasn't doing anything wrong and i can stand by that I, I will stand by that comment and i said that in one of my posts that you know you know like it it wasn't him that was our conversation both of their friends are going against each other you know you realize that joe or dream and sapnap was like can y'all not do this in my chat like be so for real what the fuck are y'all doing i'm not even gonna say it's weird but like y'all are sitting over here like this isn't a compare and contrast moment we are locked in chat anyway to sum up what she just said it seems like between the two dream and sapnap disagreed with or like when i wouldn't even say went against but like did not really help defend george in the case and she's not really helping defend her best friend or her friend. It was never about George. It was That's about crazy to me. him and the Harry situation. Now there were two major misrepresentations in Katie's previous post that painted George in a very negative light and fueled negativity towards him. Despite the fact that it doesn't make sense for George to know he made Katie uncomfortable, both True. when it happened and in the months prior, he still True. apologized to her again at the end of the video. A level of intimacy that we had together was the furthest that she'd experienced but to me it was quite tame and when i say this i am not trying to devalue how she feels about this at all i'm just trying to point out that we clearly view things differently and this is something that i have learned from now and i will be taking very seriously moving forward and i am truly sorry katie for not realizing this and not taking this difference into account it is clearly something that is extremely important to you and i'm sorry even after everything i've just said Things would be very different if I could just say that I had asked her if she was comfortable and she had said yes. But the fact is, I never did ask this. As I mentioned, there were a lot of things that she said she thought that I wasn't aware of, that if I had known... How you keep changing colors. It's because he's addressing, like... Oh, you're talking about anxiety. Her chat color does keep changing. It's weird. Anyway, that's not what I want to talk about. George... He keeps changing colors. It does seem like he's going back and forth between being the victim, defending his case, and like, like, and like not becoming the victim and owning up to what he did. It's weird. But like, I kind of understand him. I think we can end the video here. Uh, I kind of understand him. It does seem like in his case, there was not a whole lot that he could truly defend against but i feel like he did try at the very least to defend Wait, himself what? he's trying to paint the green